Let's get analysis of this now from Mark Shanahan, who's an associate professor of politics at the University of Surrey in England. Great to have you on, Mark. Um, if we look back to going into the weekend, Joe Biden was, despite all the pressure, I'm not going anywhere. You know, he is the president. You would think he has the sway to, if he wants to stay, he can stay. By Sunday, he was, he was going. If, if a president, and he has the mandate, um, he won the primaries, he was a sitting president, if he didn't want to go, how did they get him to go? Was it through threats or incentives, would you suspect? I doubt it was actually either. I think it was more a case of finally giving him a dose of reality. Uh, while Biden has been in the White House, He's been surrounded by a pretty close and fairly small inner circle of advisers, some of whom have self-interest in keeping him in the White House. But what they've not generally been brilliant at is giving him the wider truth, the whole picture of how he's been viewed, particularly since that pretty awful uh, debate appearance three weeks, just over three weeks ago. I think when he actually got COVID and had to go to Delaware and was away from that fairly febrile em environment in the White House and seeing the reality of how his presence was playing with voters, was playing with donors, was playing with senior Democrats, he realised pretty much that the game was up. Um, those White House advisers have been very effective in keeping him pretty well hidden for the last six months. And it's only in the last three weeks that we've seen how frail Biden has become. He still may well have all of the mental acuity. He's not stepping down from the presidency. But I think even he realised that his race was run. And how often is it that our elders are the last to see their own failing faculties? Yeah, you very well explained, I think, there the dangers of um, existing within an echo chamber. And it, it makes me wonder, how will life change if, for example, the Vice President Kamala Harris was to become the, the president because in, in order, actually, in order to get Kamala Harris into, into power, the Democrats need to think, where are we going to get the extra votes? Because the polling suggests at the moment they are sort of behind the Republicans. Now, for example, Joe Biden supported Israel throughout the conflict that's continuing in, in Gaza. And there are, uh, there are mem members of, of key swing states who are opposed to that conflict. They've been very vocal. Biden continued to support Israel. Is it likely the Democrats might change their stance on some positions, for example, in Gaza, as they try to get the next president to be from their party? I think we might see some small changes, but we're not going to see huge policy changes, particularly around foreign policy. The United States has always been a friend of Israel, has always been incredibly close to Israel. Um, but Joe Biden had probably backed himself into a corner with the stance that he took. Uh, Harris, I suspect, will be a little bit different, but the underlying support for Israel won't change. Maybe there will be a move towards um, some more productive talks around ceasefire, some more real efforts to bring uh, the two sides together with whatever interlocutors are required. But we won't see a huge change. She's going to win more votes domestically among women, the kind of suburban women that Trump really needs. Now may well, if she does become the candidate, move over to her. She will probably get more younger people. She's just going to galvanise the race, really, for uh, the Democrats. But I think her big positions that she will push will be more domestic. It's going to be more around women's reproductive rights. It's going to be pushing back on the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, that kind of thing. That's where she will get her votes from. And probably whichever way she balances her ticket, uh, so whichever vice president candidate pick she goes for, that will be where she tries to win back those Rust Belt upper Midwest state votes that at the moment seem to be sitting fairly and squarely with Trump and Vance. Yeah, and of course, uh, it's not a given she will indeed be the the uh, presidential candidate. If, if anything I've learned from the last week in politics is that nothing is for certain. Great to speak to you, Mark. Mark Shanahan, my guest, Associate Professor of Politics at the University of Surrey.